great. So. Do you know um, who Michael Moore is? Who? Michael Moore? No. Well, then you can't answer. Who's Michael Moore? Tell me. The documentary filmmaker. Oh, I know him. We go way back. Yeah. He's, oh he's pretty cool. Is this going to be on the news? Who are Hi. celebrities now? Wow. Oh, my God. so hot. No. <laughs> Well, he's all right, guys. The only thing I didn't agree with was um, bowling for Columbine when he was against the NRA. They do a lot for gun rights. You know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have no gun rights in this country. You know, we'd be like Russia or Canada, you know, where they ain't got no guns. Do you know who Michael Moore is? Oh, yes. Do you? Well, of can, course. Can I ask you I what? mean, his mother and father are very good friends of mine. So what do you think of the fact that Michael Moore came from Davison? I'm very proud of him. Yes, I am. He goes to our church in St. John's, Davison. A couple of years ago, Michael Moore's name stirred up trouble at his old high school. Ryan Ishu's a fan of Moore's, and he wanted to nominate him for the school's Hall of Fame. One of the board members in the Hall of Fame actually told me, don't waste my time. We'll never let Mike in. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. So at that point, I just decided to start a grassroots effort of Moore supporters here in Davison to start a campaign to, to get Michael Moore into the Hall of Fame. But then there was the other guy who was trying to get me into the Davison High School Hall of Fame. The, the committee got so upset in Davison uh, that they decided to shut the Hall of Fame down entirely. <laughs> they just closed it, rather than put me, put, <laughs> put me in it. And the original bylaws of the Hall of Fame talked about you had to graduate from Davison High School in order to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. For instance, Dr. Howard Peckins here who actually built sets and held cast parties for high school theater department students. And he was also very, very well known for giving free physicals to student athletes. But he never graduated from Davison High School. But building sets and giving physicals to students is considered good enough? That's a small town. Please welcome Michael Moore. We follow Michael on his Slacker Uprising tour across America. He's speaking at 60 universities in 20 states in an effort to get out the youth vote in the 2004 election. Michael is determined to get George Bush out of office and end the war in Iraq. States hasn't been this divided since the Vietnam War. There's an intense debate about the whole future of the American social consensus. There's a lot at stake. People get very polarized and very passionate. By trailing Michael, we hope we can convince him to do an interview with us. Our emails and letters have gone unanswered. Michael Moore spends a lot of his time and a lot of his energy endorsing Democrats who, in actuality, don't really vote in favor of the issues that he brings up in his films. That's not it. Huh? No, Why do you have to shout us down? We didn't interfere with your little gig. I'm not interfering with your gig. I'm not interfering with you. I'm not interfering with you. Isn't this a free country? So I can't talk to them? Not on this side. Let's go on the other side. What? The bush? Yeah. The bush is in the way. That's right. That's the problem, I guess. That's right. Shame on Michael Moore for what he's done to America, because he's the divider. He's the one with his lies, has worked to divide America, and he's trying to recreate another Vietnam and bring our troops home in shame, and we're not gonna sit idly by and allow that to happen. The world's a much better and a much safer place now that Saddam is gone and Osama is ousted from power. <laughs> If you look at the guy, it, you're not thinking like, oh, you know, I can't approach him, he's unapproachable, and he just seems like someone you can talk to, and I don't know, it's nice. 
Michael is surrounded by tight security on the tour. He often refers to them as his fitness trainers. This is a private meet and greet. We're not allowed this part to be video. We're not allowing this part to be video. This is a private meet and greet. Okay. This is not for press. It isn't? No, not this part. Thank you. Shouldn't we be able to believe the President of the United States? I mean, is that too much to ask for? That what comes out of his mouth is the truth? Of course, some people say, well, Clinton lied, right? <laughs> right, exactly. About a blow job. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> wait, newsflash. Let's go to the CNN screen right now and see how many people have died from a blow job. <laughs> Why, it's none. My last week of my senior year in high school, uh, two things happened. I was elected class clown um, by my fellow uh, students, and, and I was elected by the people in the community as the first 18-year-old ever elected to public office in the state to the school board. You become already a national icon for the youth movement, but more importantly, I think, was the platform he had as a member of the school board to raise issues that he would simply get kicked out of class for if he raised them in the classroom. Suddenly, he was a member of the establishment. And believe me, folks in Davidson, Michigan did not appreciate Michael Moore. <laughs> they still don't. <laughs> you don't like Dane Barber? Well, too bad. His brother owns the station. You know, you're never a star in your own hometown. And I think Michael has certainly been a victim of that. Why hasn't this community embraced him? I think he's right in being fed up with Flint. I don't blame him. After the show, Dave gives us a tour of the Flint Davison area, showing us some of Michael's old haunts and the ongoing problems with Flint. We're approaching one of the focal points for uh, Michael's Roger and me, downtown Flint, Michigan. There's the city hall to the right, and right across the street, the Genesee County Jail. This is where Buick used to sit. Where the empty lot is? Yep. This was called Buick City. You can get a feel for how far back it went. Mm -hmm. This building right here used to be Buick headquarters right here. This building is vacant. Most of the people that are living in Flint City proper are people that can't afford to leave. That's particularly troubling. was also a city that at one time had the highest per capita income of any city in the United States of America. Yeah, you could go in there and punch your time clock each day, but you truly could live the American dream. Well then, General Motors decided they didn't need us anymore and started uh, leaving uh, this community and surrounding communities in record numbers. It was devastating to the people here. I think there was a part of Mike that was, uh, you know, heavily invested in the factories of Flint because uh, he had a lot of ancestors that worked there like I did, and though he didn't work there, he always showed a keen interest in what was going on there. We're driving up upon the building right now where it all started. This was where uh, Michael had the Flint voice. As I recall, Michael may have also lived here. You know, it kind of was his office and apartment all kind of in one building. After high school, Michael publishes an alternative paper for 10 years called The Flint Voice. It's a rabble-rousing newspaper challenging political authority. It started out uh, in just in Flint as a monthly, and then it went bi-weekly, and then we went statewide. A circulation of around 10,000. Dave Marsh, a music critic, writes a syndicated column that Michael runs in The Flint Voice. I've been doing, since 1982, a new 